Today, we're going to talk about delays. You know, the effect that creates an echo. I'm not going to go into detail exactly how a delay works. This is more about how you can use it to create more random glitch effects, a bit like the, the stuff that you heard at the beginning of this video. If you like what I do, I encourage you to sponsor me on Patreon. Uh, you'll be able to download this file, but perhaps more importantly, um, I will also be sharing my secret weapon, a Max for Live device that you can use. Even if you don't want to sponsor me on Patreon, you will still be able to do this in one way or another. Uh, you will be able to do, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, I've just prepared using the, just a, a little sequence using the built-in operator device that comes with Ableton. Uh, and it sounds a bit like this now. Nothing remarkable. If we add the stock delay to that, it sounds a bit like this. By default, the it's set to sync, which means that all the echoes are in time with the track. Even if I set that to its shortest setting, it's only going to be like this. If you turn that off, though, it you can set the delay time in milliseconds, and that allows us to set much, much shorter delays, and that creates something that is I believe it's called the carpless effect. If we put that down. Turn the feedback up. What the feedback does is basically it takes and feed the echo back into itself. So you get echoes on echoes and it just makes it, yeah, it makes it repeating it, re repeating the echo for a longer time. To make this start sounding a bit more glitchy, we are going to use a Max for Live device. You don't need to use a Max for Live device. Um, it's just an easy way of randomly automating the time of the delay. So I'm going to take my Prandom Map 5, um, which I will be talking about in a moment, and map that to the time. I'm actually going to close the operator because we need to see these two at the same time. So now, turn the feedback down. As you can see, now we get for each key press, we or each MIDI note that comes in, we get a new random value for the time. And that's what this uh, random map five does. It is a variation on another Max for Live device called Expressions, I believe. Um, the difference, it's been modified to just on, whenever it, create, it receives a MIDI note, it will create a random, actually five separate random values that you can map to any parameter. Um, and if you sponsor me on Patreon, you'll be able to grab this device. It's actually my secret weapon. I use it almost always in Ableton to map all sorts of things like filter cat off or decay times or effect parameters just to create a bit more randomness to it. Um, but I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. We are going to just accept the fact that if I map that, it will just generate random values. As you can hear, it sounds a bit psychedelic. It's because when the time changes, the delay will re-pitch itself. We can change that. It's currently set to re-pitch here, but if we change that to jump, it will not do that re-pitching. It will sound a bit more robotic, and it's often a flavor that I enjoy more. So before we move on, I'm going to talk a bit more about the random map five. So every time it receives a MIDI note, um, you can that map that to any parameter. We can do another one. We can map that to the feedback, for example. These two values here, they um, allow you to set the range it's randomizing in between. So at the moment, this dial can go over for everywhere from absolutely no delay time up to as long as this is capable of. But we can restrict that. So if I turn this up just to illustrate, um, so we can do that between something like 40 and 68. 
Now you're going to see it's all going to jump around this area, but quite a narrow space. Good way of restricting it. I'm also just going to briefly mention these parameters. So this sets in milliseconds how long it will take to reach the new random value. So if, if you see this bar at the end here, it's jumping straight in between values. Let's just make this range a bit bigger again. If I turn that up, it will ease in. And also we can set it to ease out. So if you want to have smoother transitions, a bit like glide, I suppose. Well, that sounds a bit weird in this context, but it's, it's quite a useful thing if you're doing cutoff and resonance and stuff. I'm going to turn that off for now, but just to explain to you what it's doing. These two buttons, it's how that easing happens. If it's linear, it's just going to... I'm going to put some pictures on screen, and hopefully when I'm saying this, you should see them. Linear makes it, that transition just go in a straight line. Logarithmic makes it sort of ease into the new value, just to create a bit of sort of smooth transition, I suppose. So we can turn that up. This makes it sound a bit more like a tape echo if we cut some of that filter up. Gotta be quiet. Okay, so we've got some nice delay effects. I'm gonna show you how you can use that with the other delay effect in Ableton called Echo. You can do a similar thing there. So let's see, we've got plenty of more parameters here. Let's do, oh, actually, not map E just yet. Close that one again, we can close that one as well. So we've turned that delay off, so we only hear the new echo. You can turn the sync off on this one as well. This one has a slightly different flavor. Let's just do it manually before we do any mapping. how this one, it can go wilder somehow. If you turn the feedback up, it can just create this infinite, really painful loop that just gets louder and louder. But you also hear that this is repitching like the other delay, and we can turn that off if we click on character here. There's a little button saying repitch. It took me a while to find it in the first time because it's. it felt like, ah, oh, there's some empty space here. Let's put it there. Let's see what that sounds like. time now. I like those really short ones, so we just want, don't want to have it absolutely nothing, but we want quite short ones. And let's map the feedback as well. And just to avoid those really crazy ones, I'm just going to turn the maximum down so it can't quite go to full feedback. Yeah, you can hear what it's doing. Create a bit more randomness. I got one left here. Okay, I'm gonna try. I don't know what this is gonna sound like. I'm gonna map this to the chorus tuning of the second oscillator on the operator. Maybe too random that. Maybe we do the volume instead of the level instead. Okay, that's quite nice. What happens if we actually do these two delays one after the other? Let's see. Did we change that one? We can do that range a bit so we get those sort of nice short ones. We 
we can add another one of these Max for Live devices um, if we just want to randomize more stuff. We can even randomize this, I think. Yeah, so now you get actually a random. Does it jump? Does it fade? Or does it repitch? Let's do. What can we randomize in this one? Whether well, stereo, ping pong, mid side. Okay, so we've got a little vibe going. Let's have a look at that. I've just, let me see, just hear that in isolation. I made a just 808 beat. Let's see what they sound like together. I think the feedback can go a bit high on the first one there still, so I just want to turn that down a bit. Do you know what? Let's add delays to the drums. Let's see what that can do. So let's do a regular delay and then we just let me click on tick the sync and then we want to find more of these. You can obviously just automate this manually or use an LFO or something like that, but quite enjoy this. Has this one already got? Oh, it's already created in there. Let me see. Let's just automate the, the reverb send. And I also like to, so then it will send every so often, it will just send something from that glitchy stuff over to the reverb channel here. Um, turn up the delay time. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you can see the percent potential of this uh, random mapping thing. Or you can use LFOs and other stuff just to add a bit more randomization. So this this loop, which is literally <laughs> like this, is it. By by just having this, it can go on for maybe not forever, but you know, like it would just keep changing and evolving, even though it's still structured around that basic loop. So please go on Patreon and sponsor me. Maybe you will be my first Patreon. Maybe I will actually get a Patreon one day. I know IDM is quite niche, but just go for it. Try it. I want to hear what you do using these effects. Maybe the delay, maybe the random. Take care. Goodbye and don't delay. <laughs>